Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing really well and having a lovely day today. I am here for my January reading wrap up. I'll be talking about the 11 books that I read in January and my thoughts on them. So let's get straight into the video. The first book that I read in January was Call It What You Want by Bridget Kemmerer. I mentioned this book in my TBR for January because every month this year I'm picking a random physical book from my shelves to read and this was January's pick. I did have another pick which was a Colleen Hoover book and I didn't end up reading that one so I apologise to anyone who commented on that video and said they were interested in my thoughts. I kind of read the synopsis and decided that it wasn't going to be for me so I didn't end up reading it but I did read this one and I was very pleasantly surprised by this. So this is a young adult romance and YA is not my favourite genre so I was very hesitant and honestly like not, you can tell in that video when I chose this book, I wasn't that excited to read it but I ended up really really loving it. So the main characters in this book are both high school students and they're called Rob and Megan. So both of them have very interesting stories and I was very interested in not only the romance but their individual situations which really kind of made this book for me because every part of this book like I was interested in. So Megan had always previously been known as kind of like an overachiever, sort of a goody-goody but then Recently she's become a little bit of a social pariah because she ended up getting caught cheating on I think the SATs the previous year and then everyone had to like redo their exam because of that so everyone kind of hates Megan and we find out a little bit more about why she ended up doing that because it's very like out of character for her or it feels like it is at the start of the book. So Rob had always been the popular guy in school but then his dad was found to have been I think like embezzling or like basically his dad screwed over a lot of people who had invested with him so like the parents of other kids in the school so now everyone kind of hates Rob but then as well as that his dad trigger warnings her but his dad tried to um unalive himself and it didn't quite work and now his dad is like severely brain damaged and he's having to like live with his mum and his dad and they have no money and they're trying to care for the dad and it's just like a horrible situation all around so they are the main characters they like know of each other but have never really spoken but then they get paired together in a class to do a project together so the book starts with them kind of not really getting along with each other because they have so much baggage in their own personal lives that they end up just kind of bickering and not really getting along but slowly they start to rely on each other and really open up and it's just very sweet they become friends and then it does turn into a romance but I would say the second half of the book is very very focused on the other things going on in the plot and particularly with Rob he like becomes friends with this guy at the school who um he never really would have even been friends with before and it's just very sweet like I really enjoyed the friendships in this book as well as the romance and as I said the personal lives of the characters the family drama like it's all very very interesting so I gave this four and a half stars I docked it half a star just because I wanted a little bit more focus on the romance towards the end but that's because obviously I love romance books um but as a story I just really enjoyed this and I did round it up to a five star on Goodreads because I just felt like it was so well crafted and one thing in particular that I really loved and felt this book did so well is that it dealt with so many complex and just deep really difficult issues but it wasn't depressing like I didn't finish this book feeling sad I finished it and felt really uplifted so this was just a very successful read from a book that I just wasn't really that excited about. Next I have the other three I guess physical books that I read this month um, which are actually like three books in one. It is the, I forget what they're called, this says Loathe to Love You but I'm pretty sure it's the Steminist novellas by Ali Hazelwood. So I did read this physically but I am actually going to put that down and just put the book covers for each individual novella on the screen so you can actually see like what the full cover looks like versus like just the little icons on her. The first of the novellas is Under One Roof and this is about Mara and Liam. So as the title implies, this is a roommate's romance. So Mara and Liam both inherit a house from like, I think it's Liam's some kind of relation and then it was Mara's PhD advisor, I think. And neither of them wants to like sell the house or move. So they end up living together. So all three of these novellas do have similar tropes to Ali Hazelwood's other books. So all three of the heroines work in like sciencey fields. But this one I would say mostly focuses on just Mara and Liam at home in the house, which I kind of liked. It was a refreshing change. And like her other books, it kind of starts out dislike to love, but there is the mutual pining and the hero like secretly being obsessed with her. Um, so I really enjoyed this book 
book I loved the pacing of their relationship and I felt like I got to know the characters quite well for such a short book after I read this book I did read Goodreads reviews for this and I was kind of surprised by how many people didn't like it the scene at the end where they eventually like hook up I thought was really great but a lot of people didn't like it so maybe I'm in the minority there but I actually really enjoyed the steamy scene and I love this book so I did actually give this one five stars the second book is called Stuck With You and this one is about Sadie and Eric. So Sadie is best friends with Mara from the first book and I was initially super interested in this because it is a stuck in an elevator together romance and I love a bit of forced proximity but this was definitely my least favourite of the three novellas and I think it was because of the structure of the story. So one thing I didn't mention about the first book is that the whole story is kind of told as a flashback so it begins with them like essentially admitting their feelings for each other in the opening chapter and then it flashes back to like six months ago when she first moved in and then five months four months etc until it gets back to the present day again whereas this one bounced back and forth between present day when they're stuck in the elevator together and in the past when they first meet and then go on a date and essentially it turns out they had like a one night stand but then things went wrong so i didn't really like that concept because we know in the present day that Sadie is super angry at Eric about something, but we don't know what it is. And I found it hard to get invested in their relationship when I didn't know what this like supposedly horrible thing was, because I wanted to know like, is this a forgivable thing or am I gonna hate Eric as a character? So that didn't really work for me. But otherwise I did enjoy this. I really like, of course, her heroes are always just so committed. And there's just several things that the hero says after their one night stand together that show that he's like just absolutely obsessed with the heroine and he wants to be with her. And I just thought that was so like swoony. So I did enjoy aspects of this book, but overall the structure just wasn't ideal for me. So I gave this three and a half stars, but I did round it up to a four star on Goodreads. Then the final book is called Below Zero. This one is about Hannah and Ian. And again, Hannah is best friends with Mara and Sadie from the previous books. So this one I felt like was the most well fleshed out of the stories. It felt like a full novel just like condensed. So a lot more happened. So like the others, this book does start out as a flashback. Hannah is interviewing Ian for like a project she has to do at college where she needs to interview someone in like a field that she is interested in. So they have this interview and they immediately have chemistry with each other and they end up like kind of making out <laughs> at the end of this interview. And Ian is really interested in like taking Hannah out for dinner, but she is like a little bit of a commitment phobe. So she says like, sorry but I'm not really interested in that um, and they end on like good terms obviously they still like have this chemistry with each other but they know it's just not going to work out so that happens and then essentially a few years later Hannah ends up getting a job where Ian works he is like her boss or the manager or something I can't remember and this book does have like a bit of a survivalist element to it because Hannah ends up going out on this like expedition and gets stuck and then Ian rescues her so a lot goes on in this book for like such a short novella all of these are about 100 pages as I said I felt like the structure of this book was the best of the three of them it definitely felt like the most fleshed out but I think overall I didn't enjoy the chemistry between Hannah and Ian as much as the couple from the first book so I gave this four stars still very much worth reading and I enjoyed it but just not quite as much as the first one the next book that I read was Sweet on the Bus by Olivia Hale this is kind of a boss employee romance and I was just really wanting a workplace romance so I have read a few by this author before and really really loved them and I decided to pick this one up it's in the same series as one of the other books that I've read but you can definitely read them as standalones and I like skipped ahead to the one that was most interesting to me and picked it up so the hero Isaac owns a super famous hotel chain and Sophia the heroine is in advertising and she's like hired to work on like this hotel chain. So the reason I said this was kind of a boss employee romance is because it sort of starts out that way, but it becomes more like fake dating and set in the world of like the New York high society than it does workplace romance. Isaac and Sophia don't really know each other, but they both run in kind of the same circles and they're both recently out of relationships. So they decide that it's like mutually beneficial for them to date and kind of be seen together. So that is what most of the book is about and that is fine, but it's not really why I picked this book up. I was really wanting a like workplace drama romance and I'm not so into the whole like billionaire trope. It's just not really my thing. So 
yeah it, because of that I didn't really love it I did like the writing though and I've seen quite a few reviews which I definitely agree with saying their relationship is very like pragmatic like they're both very grown up and very like good at communicating with each other and it made a lot of sense their relationship and I liked that like it felt very real but because of that it wasn't super romantic and swoony so I gave this three and a half stars I did round it up to a four star on Goodreads but now as I talk about it I feel like maybe it should be a three star but then again I did like the writing so I would say read this one if it sounds interesting to you but I prefer other books from this author that have this same trope. In 2023 I'm going to be listening to at least one audiobook every month and the one that I chose for January was The Broken One by Ruth Cordello. This is book one in the Carisi Billionaire series but it does seem like it's linked to another series and I'm not really sure how yet like there was um, an ongoing thread that clearly like follows through the series which I'm probably not going to be continuing with the series so I wasn't that interested in that part but I would say you can read most of this book as a standalone. So this book is about this businessman called Sebastian. He has a very sad backstory. His wife and unborn child both passed away in a car accident and since then he has been like just very sad obviously and his romance is with Heather who is a single mum to this like five-year-old daughter. So Sebastian finds this lost stuffed animal on the side of the road and it sends him kind of reminiscing about his deceased wife and child and then his family discover that there is like an advertisement out looking for this lost toy so they convince Sebastian to return the toy to Heather because obviously it's Heather's daughter that lost the toy so Sebastian kind of reluctantly does that and then his romance is with Heather so I really enjoyed the kind of like broken hero falls for the single mum plotline I thought it was very very sweet I also really like the focus on like unconventional family structures in this book Heather actually adopted her daughter from her best friend who passed away I think during childbirth and then Sebastian has a brother who is also adopted so I really like the focus on that and there were a lot of really lovely moments in this book with like Sebastian getting to know Ava and I just thought it was really lovely I would say I got a little bit frustrated at times because Sebastian is so hot and cold with Heather and I get it because like he's obviously very damaged from his past but it just got a little bit annoying that it happened like it felt like every other chapter there was something kind of keeping them apart or he rethinks everything because of his past and I get it but it got a little bit old after a while and I was kind of toying between three and four stars but then the ending was so sweet and heartwarming and just really really lovely and that kind of left me with a good feeling about this book so I did give this one four stars however I don't think I'm going to carry on with the series just because I had a look at the other books which are all about Sebastian's brothers and they don't seem that interesting to me so I'm probably not going to carry on but I am glad that I read this one and if you want like a family series about a group of brothers I at least like this first book so I would recommend giving this a try. After that I did read three books in the Carolina Comets series by Tegan Hunter. This is a series that I really wanted to read in 2023 so I'm definitely ahead of my goal with that one and I am loving this so much so far. So this is a hockey romance series and the first book is called Puck Shy. This book is about Colin and Harper. Colin is a hockey player and he has just finished a very terrible season where everything kind of went wrong and he's in kind of a bad mood and he ends up getting stranded on the side of the road and Harper like almost runs him over because she doesn't see him but then she ends up like reluctantly rescuing him and they have this like mini little road trip together get to know each other and then they lose contact but then Colin ends up finding Harper again on like a dating app and they start dating. So kind of a simple premise but I really enjoyed this one. The banter between Colin and Harper was great. I really liked that they bonded over certain things like both liking horror movies and their relationship was just very sweet. It was also pretty steamy and it was just like a light-hearted and fun read. I gave this four stars because the tropes in it or like the plot wasn't anything really special. I just felt like it was a solid book to start out the series but then I have since read like two and a half of the books in this series and I've enjoyed all of them even more than this one. So the second book is called Blind Pass and this is about Ryan and Rhodes. Rhodes is a grumpy hockey player and Ryan is the very sunshiny best friend of Harper from the first book. She is definitely like a hopeless romantic and Rhodes is not but they end up getting married accidentally after a drunken night in Vegas and they basically decide to continue on with this marriage for the sake of Rhodes's like reputation. And just like the first book, 
look I felt like they had great chemistry great banter amazing steamy scenes I really loved Rhodes in particular he is very insecure because of a scar he has on his face from a hockey accident when he was younger and I just really liked the way that that was dealt with in the book there's a really like emotional scene where Rhodes like finally talks about it and the way that it impacts his perception of himself and Ryan is just so sweet with him about it and it was just such a lovely scene like really heartwarming in a book that is like mostly light-hearted and fun. I gave this one five stars I just really loved it it had everything from the first book that I loved with the addition of the like accidental turned fake marriage and the grumpy sunshine thing and I just really loved it. Then the third book and the final one that I read in January is called One Timer and guys this one is a surprise pregnancy romance which if you've watched many of my videos you'll know that I love so I had been like super excited to get to this book all the way through the like previous two and it did not disappoint. I enjoyed this one so much. This is about Hollis and Lowell. So Lowell is a hockey player again and Hollis is the sister of Harper from the first book. So this book begins at the couple from the first book's wedding and Hollis mistakes who Lowell is and gets really annoyed at him at the wedding um, and they definitely start off on the wrong foot. They have like this big argument but then throughout the night of the wedding they kind of resolve their differences. They end up like dancing together, realise they have a connection and they have a one night stand and then obviously Hollis finds out that she's pregnant. I know a lot of people don't like surprise pregnancy romances but I personally love the whole forced proximity aspect of them and the fact that these are pretty much strangers that have to figure things out. The chemistry between the main characters was so good. It was very steamy. I love that it had the like friends with benefits for the sake of the pregnancy hormones trope and it was just really sweet seeing like both characters adjusting to becoming parents. There was just a lot of really like heartwarming and sometimes like emotional moments in the book but then at the same time it was lighthearted and fun as well and I just loved it so I gave this one five stars. So I do actually have another hockey romance to talk about that I read this month and I started this before any of the other books but it took me a really long time to read because it is kind of a longer book and the book is Consider Me by Becca Mack. This is book one in the Playing for Keeps series and I believe there's one other book out and then I'm assuming there will be more as well. So Carter, the hero of this book, is a hockey player and he is also very much a player in terms of sleeping with a lot of women. <laughs> so Carter and Olivia meet at a bar and Olivia is like best friends with one of Carter's teammates girlfriends. Carter is like instantly infatuated with Olivia but she is like absolutely not like you are such a player and I'm just not getting involved in that but then he is so infatuated with her that he just spends a long time trying to convince Olivia to consider him which is what the title of the book is in reference to. So there was a lot that I really liked about this book. Carter is the absolute sweetest. I loved how much he loved Olivia and he was just obsessed with her and I love that like playboy hero finds the one that he loves and like will stop at nothing to get her. I just think it's so romantic and I really like that and I think this book will really work for people that want to spend a long time with the characters. Like if you want a book where you get to see them meeting, you see them like in that stage of like should we date or not, you see them like falling for each other, they say I love you, they get more serious, they move in together, like if you want that you will like this book. But for me, I felt like it just went on a little bit too long. This is about 450 pages and I just felt like it could have been half that length and I would have been satisfied. For me, the part of this book that I enjoyed the most was Carter chasing Olivia and trying to convince her to give him a chance. And then once she did that, I was like less interested. But I will say that I think the book did a good job of not really dragging, even though it took me a while to get up the willpower to like finish the book when I knew it wasn't really gonna be super interesting to me personally. I still didn't find like, oh my God, this is so slow. Like I felt like the pacing was pretty decent. I haven't actually written my review for this one on Goodreads yet, but I'm probably gonna give it between three and a half and four stars. There was definitely some repetition in the book and a lot that wasn't necessary, but the romance was just so cute that I kind of didn't mind too much. So I feel like this is one of those books where some people will absolutely love it and it could be like a new favourite and then other people will just not enjoy it at all. So I feel like my review isn't that helpful in that sense. But if you think this is something you might enjoy and you like books where you get to spend a lot of time with the characters, I think you could give this one a go. The final book that I read in January is actually another sports romance. I feel like I've read a lot of them this month and it is How to Lose at Love by Sarah Nye. So this is the first book in her new Campus Legends series and the heroes of this series are actually the brothers 
of the hero from her secret roommate book which I read last year and actually made it into my favorites of the year video like I really enjoyed that book so I was really excited to find out more about the hero's brothers so this is set in college and Dallas is a football player and he gets like hired by one of his teammates to dump his teammates girlfriend for him so said girlfriend is Ryan who is the heroine of this book and she is like what the hell like why why have you been paid to break up with me so they kind of start off in a weird situation she's not necessarily like angry at him but she's just kind of confused so it's definitely an interesting start to the book but then Dallas's agent suggests that he be seen with a nice respectable looking girl um because it will look good for his career I guess because he's going to be drafted soon so he convinces Ryan to be his fake girlfriend and it is kind of fake dating but I feel like the fake dating doesn't go that far into the book like pretty quickly they start to hook up for real and one of the things I loved about this book which I think Sarah and I in the past has done really well and then she went through a phase where she didn't do this as much but I'm glad she seems to be back to it which is really focusing on like these long drawn out amazing like steamy scenes where there's a lot of chemistry between the characters and it's kind of like a slow burn within the scene itself. So for example, in this book, they go to a house party together and then she ends up staying over at his house to like preserve the facade of their relationship. So they're like hanging out in his room and she's like, do you wanna play a game? And she looks through his games and finds like a truth or dare, but she doesn't realize that it's actually like a relationship truth or dare. So they start playing that game. And that is like the start of them admitting feelings and where they share their first kiss and everything. And it very much reminds me of like a classic Wattpad romance, like truth or dare scene, <laughs> but I love that. Like it's so good. And I just really enjoyed this book overall. I really like the relationship between the characters. The banter was great. I always read Sarah Knight's books really quickly because her writing is very like dialogue heavy and in not very weighed down by like internal monologue and I really enjoy that because it makes her books very easy to read. My one complaint about this book and the reason I'm giving this four and a half stars instead of five is that the conflict at the end was kind of annoying. It has like the miscommunication trope which I didn't love but other than that I really really enjoyed this one and I feel like this series is really promising and I'm really excited to read the others when they come out. So they are all of the books that I read in January. I feel like I had a great reading month and I'm really looking forward to February. I have a lot of great books that I'm reading. Actually two books I'm reading right now. I feel like both of them might be five stars and I am vlogging one of them. So watch out for that video when it comes out at the end of the month. And yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy romance book related content and hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Bye.